church and help us identify with the gospel, like who we're really supposed to be like. And sometimes it's, it's easier to make a change with a smaller group of people than with a large group because we say, hey, what we're doing right now is not really what church is all about. But, Pastor, they got churches in town that have hundreds of people on my own. Yeah, but I'm not going to knock that. I just say, let's do something different here because I want to be more effective. We want to line up with what the gospel says what we should or should be. Thus, that's why we change the church setting. You like it? I like it. Because it's not a, this is not, church is not a spectator sport. We're not going to pay our commissions be and show up and listen to the pastor preach and do worship, right? We have to really be involved with this outside these four walls. And I've been saying that for a long time. And me and Andy have been talking for a year or so or better about this different thing. And he's implemented some things at Purdue University in Missouri as a missionary pastor. And, and it worked. It was like, hey, tell these people that you can be like Jesus every day of the week, these students. And they go out and lay hands on sick people in the marketplace and God heals them or leads them to Christ. It's just amazing, right? Because now I don't have to reserve my Christianity until this Sunday morning or even Wednesday night prayer meeting or whatever you do. You can do it all the time. We want to empower you to realize that this is exactly what the Bible tells us we're supposed to do. Right? So when you're driving down the road and somebody has a broken car, you're going to stop and help them, right? Because you know that God is giving you, that's a divine moment that God's providing for you to share his love. Maybe just share his love or buy somebody a, some groceries or, or give some money away to a homeless person or whatever you do. God's always talking to us through his spirit to do stuff. Exactly. And we don't want to obey. And I just want to keep the warning of that, and I was, this, is my, this is the pastor part of me, okay? The warning of that, if you don't obey the Holy Spirit, it's equal to witchcraft. Look it up in your Bible. Come on, it's true, right? So, why did Paul say that? Because it's important that we understand the Spirit of God is moving and God's our purpose in life. Not, I don't care what career you do, I don't care what your skill levels, I don't, all that doesn't really matter, but our purpose in life as believers is to share Jesus with the world around us, right? Come on, is that good or not? That's true, right? That's the word. So we're going to talk about Andy talk the last couple weeks, and I'm going to teach today about the word. Next week we're going to talk about prayer. And um, so last night, you know, which I didn't know what was going on with Elizabeth, but last night the Lord told me to start the sermon with this, so I'll have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. If you could put that first slide up for me, Andy, if you just put the, or don't put the second slide up. Um, and I'm going to try and do this by my phone so we can do a little slide presentation. Um, I turned it off. I don't want to show the last slide. I just want the first slide. Just give me a minute. I'm technically counting something. <laughs> So it's not on here yet, son, so make sure Keynote is open to Roberts. Okay, play. Thank you.
That's just to make sure you stay awake while I'm preaching today. So, so uh, no, I think I'm good. All right, praise the Lord. Father, we uh, humbly come to you this morning. And again, we just thank you for your word that brings life to us. And Father, as we uh, examine your, the scriptures this morning, I pray that you touch our hearts and our minds to re realize how we are to mature in your and not just be infants any longer. That we desire now, but we need to get onto something and move on to bigger things for your kingdom. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for that this morning. Help us to grow up this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, the word in Psalms 119, we all know this one because we've heard it a thousand times. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I could probably preach for hours on just that alone, but I won't. I want you to read the rest of it with me. So I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Persevere, uh, preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing praises of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in, in constantly uh, take my life in my hands, I will not forget your laws. The wicked has set a snare before me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decree to the very end. Hallelujah. So we, we always remember the first verse on that, uh, Psalm 105. We say, uh, your word is a lamp unto my feet and uh, light unto my path. We, we, that's it. We don't, that's, there's, there's more than that. There's like a, a, a vow that I am going to follow your word. I want to obey your word. I want your word to be part of me. I want you, I want it to engulf my thinking and my 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 feelings and my my body. Your word is what I need. Amen. Is what the psalmist is saying. I need and I will follow. My I put my life in my hands. It doesn't work out. I need to follow your precepts. Amen. So that's important. I just want you to have that thought in your head. Now I want you to turn to Matthew twenty-eight. We're going to do a lot of this this morning. I, I apologize. No, I don't apologize. I really don't. I want you to get this. I, 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 since Wednesday, I'm like, God, this is too much scripture. You know, I just got to preach one portion. Maybe I'll do that later on. But this is important because we're changing the attitude of church. And we have to line it up with scripture. Otherwise, we're just doing what Bob says, right? No, we need to do what the scripture says. We need to change our life. We can't change our life by ourselves. That's why we have the Holy Spirit to help us understand the word, the guides, and lead us. Let's look at this. This is the commission, the great commission. It says this, then the 11 disciples went, verse 16, is everybody there? I'm going to wait because some of us are new at this. I read a story about Christians, uh, you know, coming and talking about God, doing everything they can, you know, on Sunday morning, but never using it. Uh, you know, it's like going to school and learning something and never using it. It's like, what good is it? You know, yeah, I feel good Sunday morning, Pastor. Made me feel good, right? And if your job, Pastor, is to feed me, I'm like, yeah. That's not true, but let me share this with you one more time. This is a great commission, right? This is what Jesus told the 11 apostles. I believe that is also for us today. Yeah. Uh, if we compartmentalize and say, no, it was just for the apostles back then, that we make the gospel powerless. That's what we see today. Okay? So look at this. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. How many doubters we have today? Lord, please forgive my doubting. Lord, please forgive my unbelief. We all, people are going to do that, right? And we're not going to be sure because we can't control things. But this is the, the commandment. It says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Who's that me? Jesus. Jesus. That's right, Jesus. And I'll show you that here in a little bit again. 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very ends of the age. Now, for you that are new, we would, we would, I've been teaching, and Tina and I have been teaching, and Andy, we've been, we were baptized in the name of the Father because we're family. We're baptized in Jesus because we're servants. We're baptized in the Holy Spirit because we are, come on. You guys are real quiet. Come on. Say it. We are missionaries. We are missionaries. We're sent. We're missionaries. So that's where we fail. This is the church. This is, we, we are baptized in the, oh, we're a family. Oh, we like to get together. We like to play volleyball. We like to have potluck dinners. We like, oh, we're family. We love, 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 love each other. Right? Oh, we're servants. So I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve in the nursery. I'm going to serve with the children. I'm going to be an usher. I'm going to be a greeter. Oh, we're all servants. Oh, that's so nice. I mean, it's, you know, I love seeing her Jason Ramey in the morning. They, they're smiling. They're always happy. You know, you come to church. It's nice. Right? But then we stop right there. We pick up our Bibles. We go home and we're all happy. But that's not what it says. Then the last part that we have to fulfill. He sent the Holy Spirit to give us power to be witnesses for him in the world. So the last part, we're baptized into Jesus as uh, in the Holy Spirit. It says Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Didn't stop at the Son part. This is where the church is weak, and this is where the church messes up because we, we put the whole gospel in it, uh, into uh, what is it about us instead of what we're supposed to do, right? How we're supposed to be. Where the gospel tells us that we're supposed to be missionaries. That's what the word translates out. Holy Spirit, we're missionaries. And if we're missionaries, that means we have a mission to do, right? So if you, wherever you work, you can share Jesus with people, right? You're going to be persecuted for that, guaranteed. All right? Wherever you're at, wherever you're in the marketplace, and you share Jesus in Madison, people are going to look at you really funny. Where was I talking with Pastor Jorge the other day? We went to uh, Panchero's to have lunch. And I'm not quiet when I'm in a restaurant. You know, when I pray over my food, I want people to know we're praying to Jesus, right? I don't do it loud on purpose. I just the way I am. But I get excited talking to Pastor Jorge. So I'll share this with Pastor Jorge. Pastor has my Jorge pastors our Spanish church that meets in the evening. Uh, and he got excited. So if he got excited about the Word of God, then I got excited about the Word of God. And we were the only ones talking in the whole restaurant. I, the Holy Spirit made me aware of that. You know, like, hey, listen. What's going on? There we go. People in the back, people in the front, people eating their food. We we're talking about being baptized, being servants of Jesus, being missionaries, sharing our faith with the world around us. I was excited. I always get excited about the word. Um, that's just who I am, I guess. God wants us to know that we have a mission, not just to uh, show up here on Sunday. All right? Is that okay? Is this, I don't want to be too hard on you this morning. All right? Right? This is... Um, you know, a father with a broken heart right now wants to share with you that this is the most important thing I, I can teach you this morning, that there's something more than just about ourselves in this whole thing we call Christianity. Amen. Right? There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. All right. All right. Let's turn to one more. This is just introduction here. So let's go to Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians, right? <laughs> I know it's Ephesians because my book is all <laughs> worn out there. If I could just get one book in my spirit totally, it would be the book of Ephesians. If I could just live it out, I think it would be the book of Ephesians. So look at, uh, let's look at chapter 4. This is uh, one of the most misused uh, scriptures in, 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 in Christianity, but it's also the most powerful scripture in Christianity. Because we teach this, the top part, part of it, but we never teach the last part of it. We don't want to get to the part where it says you need to mature. Yep. You need to grow up. Yep. There's something more to do than just showing up on Sunday morning. Because look at what it says here. Let's go back. Let's start up at um, uh, verse 4. Let's just do it. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Let's start right there. I won't preach on it, but he's, you know, I'll, uh, you know, praise the Lord. Uh, be patient. Be bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bonds of peace. 
There is one body, not many churches, there's not many, listen, there's not denominations, there's not, you know, whatever. I don't like uh, segregated churches, I hate that stuff. I think God has more for the body of Christ, amen? It's what, and the word is chosen all, all over the place, and here's one of the places they do. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. It doesn't say Catholics or Lutherans or Protestants or Peter, uh, Hindu. It, it's all, right? Who is over all and through all and in all. So when people say, I'm a Hindu or I'm a Baptist or I'm a whatever, I don't want to hear that. Do you know God the Father? Do you know He loves you? Do you know He sent His Son to die for all your sins? And he has a, He's the only way to salvation. That's what the Acts 2 says, right? Only way. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you believe in. I don't listen to that. I go past that. I look at the heart. God sees that soul all confused about the religious stuff in the world. And I say, no, that's garbage. You need to know this Jesus. Amen. Amen? I don't listen to, I don't want to hear about what they believe in, their isms and all that stuff. I, just, I go past that. My mind doesn't even hear it anymore. God loves you, and it breaks them immediately. I don't argue about if I'm Hindu or Baptist or whatever. No, do you love God? Well, I go to church. No, do you love God? My grandma brought me to church. No, do you love God? They can't, I don't want to hear the arguments. I go past it. The time is short, saints. We need to know that what the Word of God says about salvation, all right? This is what we're going to teach about. So we need to mature. We need to grow up, understand our responsibilities, be able to do the work that God's called us to do. But Pastor, you know, I do all this stuff. Do you love God? Is there a fear of God in your life? That's another sermon for another time. Do I reverend Him? Do I honor Him? Do I put him first place? Oh, let's go back to scripture. Sorry, I didn't need to preach there. Um, getting heavy. But to each, verse 7. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ appointed it. This is why it says, when he ascended, who ascended? Jesus ascended on high, and he led captive in his train and gave gifts to men. Jesus went and descended and he also ascended. Who does it, who, uh, look at verse 9. What does he ascend mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended high, higher than all the heavens in order to fulfill the whole universe. To fill the whole universe. It was he, so Jesus ascended into after his resurrection, he ascended down into the lower parts, what some people call and, and refer to as Abraham's bosom, led captive free, all the saints from past history now with him in heaven, right? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and me now, and he says, I'm going to give you some gifts. All right? I'm going to give you, the believer, some gifts to help you, and I'll see just a minute what to help us do, right? It says, look at this. It says, it was he who he Jesus, right? Jesus gave um, some to be apostles, right? Some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. To do what? Verse twelve. Underline this. Highlight this in your Bible. This is a. This is why we are here. To prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ, who's the body of Christ? You and me, right? We're the body of Christ. Everybody confesses to be believers in the body of Christ. May be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. And look at what it says. And become mature, attaining to the full measure of the fullness of Christ. I preach on this all the time. Ask me if it's been here for a while. Why? Because we there's a fullness of Christ that we can obtain. I want to walk in the fullness of Christ. I don't think I'm there. I don't, I'm working on it, just like everybody else, right? We have to attain the fullness of Christ. Why? Because we want to see the unity of the body of Christ. Because when Jesus prayed in John 17, he said this. I pray that you all be one, that the world, the unbeliever, the, the people of the world will know me. See? They're not here to know you. They're not here to know the Capital City Church. They're not here to, they're here to know Jesus. 
So we come into unity. That's why I love going to the gates of glory last time. Well, we didn't go. It was here. It was a, a citywide worship. I don't know how many churches were here, but we probably only had about 80 people. It was nice. It was, it was a joyful time. And the presence of God filled this place. But it was nice because other churches were here. We were together doing something together. Huh? And when Jesus said, when we're together, we're worshiping in unity, I, the presence of God filled this place. It was in worship. It was in worship practice. It was in preparation for the service. Already the presence of God filled this building. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Ted and Brian. Brian in worship. But Ted goes, oh, uh, you guys must pray in this building. You know, because he's been in other churches. I've been to other events in this city. You know, it's just like a dead church. It's beautiful. It's, it's more uh, beautiful than our building. It's just a beautiful church building. But there's like nothing there. I talked to my friend in uh, Alabama. He said the church is dead in Alabama. They People show up every Sunday. They dress nice. The ladies got their dresses on. The men got their suits on. They come to church. It, there's no spirit there. I want you to be, know, as we go out further today, understand that God has given you power to do what I'm telling you to do right here. Amen. Right? We have power. We have this anointed, uh, holy power that God's given us through His Spirit so we can do the work that He's called us to do. Right? He's not going to leave us as orphans. Like, oh, but how do I do church? How do I do Jesus? How do I live? No, it's not that way. Religion gives us all this confusion. I'm trying to do all the check marks. I, well, Pastor said I gotta read my Bible, so I, okay, I get a reading plan. Oh, I didn't make. I, I skipped a few months, you know, or a few weeks or whatever. I know some of you are better than me, so maybe a few days. I did, I, and then all of a sudden we put condemnation on ourselves because we didn't do it, right? God is looking for our heart. Amen. Amen. All He wants is our heart. Amen. Lord, I give you all of my life. That means all. Don't say it if you don't mean it, right? Can't they? I surrender all. All to Jesus. I don't know the word said. I surrender, I surrender all. Right? We sing it at church. Oh, yay. We go outside and we argue with our wife all the way home, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just doesn't make sense, right? I surrender all my will, all my ways, everything to you, Jesus, so you be glorified. There's some people in the world doing that right now. You know that, right? Being persecuted and killed for the names for Jesus' sake. Only reason, nothing else. Just that they confess that Jesus is their Savior. People being beheaded and tortured and burned alive. And, you know, we don't hear that on CNN and Fox News any, or any, on TV. But it's happening all over the world. All right. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians. Oh, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish here. Man. So we this is this is what this is why you study the Bible, because you want to go, you want the full fullness of what the writer is telling you. You want to understand what the spirit is telling you. So you stop right there, okay. I, I need to work on the fullness of God. But look why. It says then we will no longer be infants. Yeah. Huh? Why? Why do we need the fullness of Christ? Because we're babies. I told the church one time, I remember saying, Richard, remember that? I said, we're not filling a nursery here. Yeah. <laughs> we're not a baby. This is not a nursery, right? We're going to be warriors. We're going to put on a full armor of God. We're going to have a helmet of salvation, a breastplate of righteousness. We're going to have a sword of word of truth. We're going to walk in, in, as warriors for God's kingdom. What do you mean? I, I leave that for the Marines to do or something. You know, I'm not, that's not me. Pastor and Tina can do that. You know, that's what they're called to do. No, we're all called to do this. So we're not tossed back and forth by waves of waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and the, by the cunningness of craftiness of men in their deceitful schemes. Instead, speaking the truth in love, amen, yeah. we, will, we uh, will in all things grow up into him who is the head that is Christ and so on and so forth. Go ahead and read the rest of that. All right? So we're, we're growing up in Christ. We have to grow up. We can't just be taught. I mean, I, me and Tina have been doing it. I, I got saved when I was 19 years old. We've been in church a long time. A long time. We've seen the bad and the good. We've seen pastors fall. We've seen ministers fall. We've seen people fall. We've seen people restore. We've seen people back in the ministry. We've just seen all sorts of things. We're in a fight. Anything the devil can do to get you to doubt and fear God or think somebody's judging them, then they're going to throw it on you. And guess what? Did you hear? The, I met a lady. I did a... Uh, you know, for um, 
some years back. And she was offended because when she was at church, she's walking down the hallway, and two of the ladies in the church were talking about her in church. 50 years before she went back, she, got, well, she, would, she came here. She came here. So 50 years later, finally had peace and forgiveness in her heart. 50 years because some ladies in church talked about her. And we got a lot of hurting people out there. We talk to uh, people on the street. The reason you don't go to church is because they've been offended by somebody in the church or a pastor or a minister, right? Because we're judging them. No, we have to love them into a relationship with Jesus, right? Right? Right. So stop talking about each other. All right. Matthew, uh, no, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And uh, Dion, would you get the uh, communion things and bring them in here? First Corinthians chapter two, uh, verse ten says, "But are you there? I'm sorry." First Corinthians chapter. I'll see when Yolanda gets her, her app up there. Then I'll, I'll know when to go. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Which verse? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. We're going to start there. Or verse, yeah, second part of verse 10. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Let me read it again. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Holy Spirit, right? That's, it's, I got a capital S in my Bible. That's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deeds of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? So, do you see it says a little spirit? It got a small S there in my Bible. I don't know if it has it in yours. There's a large S meaning the Holy Spirit and a small S meaning your spirit. We all have spirits. That's what comes born again. Our spirit becomes alive to the Holy Spirit. We, have, we recognize that we, we are, we're, some, we're a sinner. I mean, I don't know about you, but the day I got saved, my spirit recognized that God and everything was true. And I, I instantly said, God, forgive me. Right? I was in a, in a jail, so I didn't have a preacher preaching at me at the moment. The Holy Spirit showed me that I was not good. Right? And I said, okay, yes. It's in the same way, look at the next part, it's in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God the Father. And you remember what Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Spirit who's going to tell you what I've heard from the Father. So the Holy, Holy Spirit hears what's from the Father and, the, and from Jesus, and he's going to tell you. Amen? So when you walk past that lost person in the market, the Holy Spirit says, go talk to that person. You say, uh-uh. Right? Because the Father wants you to talk to that person. Right? That's what's happening. The, whole, the Father says, I see that lost person. You have the message of hope. Now share that message of hope with that person. Don't feel guilty today. Just know that's what this, that's what this is about. All right? Don't go with me or mine and say, Lord, help me be like you're supposed to be. Amen? Because we are messengers. We are missionaries. We're supposed to share what we have in us. Amen? Well, Pastor, I'm going to say it for a couple weeks. It doesn't matter. The reason you gave your life to Jesus is the same reason that person needs it here. I was hopeless, and now I have hope. I don't know. I can't explain it, but I, I just cried out to him, and he changed my life. That person needs to know that. Right? It's not complicated. This is not hard. This is our mission. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go, let's go further. It says, um, in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Verse 12. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has really given us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit was sent to us, given to us, so we would know the things of God. Just like the Holy Spirit does. Just like Jesus does. We can know what the, our daddy is thinking. Hallelujah. Awesome. It's not a secret. Amen. You can know. What does God want for me? You already know. You're just not listening. 
Right? What's the will of God for me? The Spirit of God's going to tell you, but you're not, you don't want to do the will of God because that means sacrifice. That means giving up. That means taking your cross daily and following God. Amen? We don't want to do that part because in the church we're taught difference. We're taught you just show up. We have to feed you because that's the responsibility of the pastors. We feed your little sheep and we comb your hair and make you feel good and out the door you go. That's not what church is going to happen. That's not church anymore. Not my book. Amen. All right? Not my book. I just think we're, I've been teaching, I think I've been teaching wrong. I've been feeling, oh, God, I have to make sure everybody's feeling good and call them and text them and make sure everybody's, you know, happy during the week, right? And you guys, now listen, I'm just telling, I'm putting this on you because it's a small group today. But I'm putting this on you, right? You should come with joy. You should come to the parking lot dancing. Pastor, look what God did. Just like the disciples did. We laid his hand on the sick. Oh my God, the sick was made whole. There's a dead person. He was raised alive. I shared Jesus with this person. And they came to him. Amen. I'm going to say this one. I'll say like you said. Oh, that's awesome. But rejoice that your name is written in the land of life. Amen. Let's rejoice about that. Amen. But that should be a joyful time. Could you imagine what the church would be like? Just in a group right here. Pastor, I got a testimony. I want to share. Look at my friend I just brought to Jesus. I went into the bar last week. The Holy Spirit told me to go in there. I went into this bar. I talked to this lady. Here she is. She's now a believer. Oh, oh we can't go in the bar. That's unholy. Yeah. <laughs> we can't go over there. That's unholy. That's what we've been taught in the church for so long. We are supposed to be separated from the world. No, it says don't be unequally yoked with the world. Don't align yourself with the world. Don't be uh, uh, mates with the world. Don't don't be part. Don't do that. But we're in the world. We do what we do so we can be a light to the world. Amen. Amen. Is anybody getting this today? Amen. This is true, right? This is true stuff, right? Amen. We need to be a light to the world. We need to love the people around us. I remember. Uh, was it? Oh, Andy. Um, can I tell a story? Do it. <laughs> so we go for it. <laughs> we went to, uh, he was over at the uh, uh, computer place down the road from here, right? And he's in there getting his computer fixed, right? And, and I thought, well, I'm gonna go, I was going to go over there and get a, a, a cord for my Apple computer, for my, Air, my Apple Air. I have a cord at home, and I hate digging around the couch, getting it, unplugging it, and taking it to the work. So for years, I've been wanting to get another cord. Well, he was over there, I said, oh, I'll go over there and get that cord. Well, I messed up his time of testimony with this guy, right? I just messed it up big time, you know? I'm like, praise the Lord, hallelujah. He's like, oh, Dad, what are you doing here, you know? But anyway, I saw that, I knew it, I, I messed it up anyway, I was going for it. So I just picked up it, and I got out of there. But the thing was, he was sharing with this guy who uh, obviously is, uh, believed that he's gay, right? So instead of going, oh, I got a gay guy in front of me, right? No, he, t he engages the conversation. He wants to get to know this guy. He wants to invite him to his house for a game night or a pizza or whatever. You know, you just, you invite these people that are hurting because, you know, people have these different things in their life because they believe a lie. The gospel tells you who they are. We can't share the gospel and go, oh, you gay. No. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. We got a letter from a guy from uh, uh, Rockford. Rockford, Illinois. He said he's going to come up and protest in Madison, Wisconsin. And he wanted us to come with him and protest at the gay parade, which was supposed to happen in the Capitol. But he had the wrong date. So it was kind of interesting he had the wrong date. But, you know, so we, because we looked it up, you know. But this, this guy's off. Anyway. So we told him, don't come to Madison. You can pray from Rockford. Don't come here and, and, and mess up the stuff that this church and other churches have gained in the community. And just because you're outside, you want to come here and, and make a scene. No, we don't want you to make a scene. You want to come? You come and pray. You want to come? You come and pray and worship over our city so the Spirit of God will continue to flow through the city, right? Because there's men and women that we've been here a long time, and we need to join together and reach out to the community, the, the politicians, the, the, all the different communities, amen? Because I believe God wants everybody to be saved. Amen. Come on, church. I, I believe everybody needs to be saved. I think everybody, there's a, there's a destination that's going to happen. Some people are going to go to hell. That's not God's plan. Amen. Right? God never planned for us to go to hell. He wants us to bring to him. But why? The enemy is working hard right now. Hard, hard, hard. Changing things. Right? And the church needs to be, could be babies and start being infant, uh, infants and start growing up and no longer mature in God and start doing the work that he's called us to do. Amen. Could be selfish. Did I say that? Amen. I love you. <laughs> I love you. 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 But the church is weak. Hallelujah. All right? And I'm tired of playing church. And uh, this has been in my spirit for many, for a couple years now. And I know 
that we need to understand that the Spirit of God was given to us to help us understand the things of God and mature us in God and help us equip us to do the work that God's called us to do. Right? Read John 14 and 15. He said, I'm not going to leave you orphans, orphans. You're not going to be by yourself. I'm going to go to be with my Father. And Jesus is sitting, Jesus is not in your heart. And I know people say, oh, we teach the children. Uh, Jesus is not in my heart. Jesus is physically sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and me today. All right? And Elizabeth. Amen? Amen. Right? God's praying for you and me. Jesus is praying for you and me. So, I think one of the things, if I was Jesus up there in heaven, looking down at Capital City right now, I would think that he would say, would you, church, please listen to the Spirit of God? Yeah. I mean, I think he's praying that, Father, help them. Spirit. Do whatever you can so they will listen to you. Hallelujah. Amen? But I, and I think God's so cool about this. He's just not going to make force it on us. The Spirit is a gentle, small, still voice that speaks to us. And illuminates the word of God to us. He helps us understand what God wants us to do. Even this morning, it's like we went in. Uh, well, we, we've done this many times over the last year, so we just go in these pan mode when something Elizabeth is not where she's supposed to be. Please pan. No, no, we're not going to pan. Amen. God, you know, we're not going to do that. So we had our moment this morning, and we said, okay, no. The Spirit of God says, peace. Peace. So I text my kids and I said, I, I sent them a note that Elizabeth gave us. And then I, you know, there was a little bit of anxiety in the text back, you know, so I was going to tell them, peace, peace. Right? God is in control. Right? In your life, in our life, in your life, in your situation. So if God puts you in a situation to uh, go and do something. He's going to give you peace. And you're walking in that situation. God's going to give you the power to deal with that situation. Mm -hmm. I remember going to, uh, I was, uh, man, I've always been a witness or a person, kind of evangelist, hard. Um, I walked into some of the darkest streets in, in Japan, and God just said, go there. I walked down the street. I was the only white guy in the whole place, right? Walking down the street, thinking, what am I doing here? But knowing that God, the Holy Spirit was leading me down this road. And it enabled a sheer Christ with one person. And that was amazing, right? Don't pray for me, because this kid said this to me. He's a, he was an airman or a marine. I don't know what he was. He was a service member. And uh, I'm sure he just got done with the bar or whatever. He got down with our valley, right? And he says, don't pray for me. Pray for my mom. You know, I said, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to pray for your mom. The Holy Spirit told me this. And I told him about his life like that. He got knowledge, the word of knowledge, right? He melted in my hands. Cried, left there. I know I'll never see him again. I don't know where he's at. I don't know if he's what he's at, but he met Jesus that day. Amen. Amen. Right? That's the kind of experiences we need to have all the time. It's just Amen. a normal thing. Come here, hey, I can't wait to get the text messages, emails, and the videos and hey Pastor, look what I've done. Look what God's done. Look what God's done through me. Amen. All right, let's go. Um, we're we're really talking about the word of God today. I love you guys. Thank you for being patient with me. Matthew 13 is the story about the sower and the seeds. Let's go there just for a moment. And the seed, as most of us know, is the word of God. And Jesus tells this parable of a farmer that went out and sowed some seed. And he scattered the seed. And some of the seed fell on, oh, it's the first 13, uh, chapter 13, verse, uh, the first verse there, the first verse. There's so little in my Bible, I can't, I need blue glasses, I guess. Uh, verse 3, let's go there, it says, in red in my Bible, it says, a farmer, is that what you guys say? Chapter 13, so a farmer went out and sowed some seed. And he was scattered the seed, and some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Some fell on the soil, and it sprung up quickly, because the soil was shallow. Uh, it sprung up quickly, uh, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plants were scorched, and they withered 
because they had no roots. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant. Some other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop of 160 to 30 times that was sown. He who has an ear, let him hear. Now, the disciple asked a question. Let's go to verse 11 real quick. The disciple asked a question. Hey, what are you talking about? That's like me sometimes, like God talks to me. So the knowledge of God, I don't look at, don't you talk to God? Huh? Don't you talk to God? Like, uh, I don't understand something. I'm like, God, what, is he, what are you trying to tell me, you know? And he just talks to me, hey, Bob, you know, let me show you this again. You know, right? He calls me Bob. He doesn't call me pastor, so, you know. Uh, and then he shows me. And I, I'm like, okay, great. It's, just, it's kind of what God does for us. He wants to be that intimate with you. He yeah. wants to talk to you. Okay, so look what it says. This is the knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. So not everybody has that secret. We have the message, right? Because we believe. Whoever what has um, has will have whoever has will be given more. And he who has abundant, whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak in parables. So some have understanding, some don't have some understanding. He gives it, and if they don't understand, he takes it away. Through, through seeing, they do not see. Through hearing, they do not hear or understand. He's talking about the church, the Jewish uh, people at this time. They, they're not going to understand, right? They don't understand. Um, then he says in verse 40, In them is the fullness of the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people has hearts have become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they close their eyes. So this is what I want to share with you about that. And then you go on and he explains a parable about people that receive the seed and some accept it, some don't, some are, are tangled by uh, leave and so on and so forth, right? So what, 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 why did I say this? Because some, um, the children of Israel did not re understand and the church, the reason the children of Israel didn't understand because they got caught up in the law. They got caught up in doing certain rituals and things to make themselves holy. And that's what exactly what's happened to the church. Right? We have to do certain things. We have to do a certain way. We have to look a certain way. We have to do certain things. And we got caught up in doing a religious activity and we're dying. We can't hear the Spirit of God. So how do we break that? Right? How do we break the, the religious activity that we've been taught for a thousand years now? We have church this way. We have a building. We have chairs. We listen to the manifest in years that have gone by in the early 1600s. We have like a, uh, a separate stand where they, the, the oracles, right? They would they'd read the word, right? It was so holy. Nobody could even touch their Bible because it was only the priest that could do it. So we read scripture and we go, Amen. And they would sit down, you know, and it was just, it's just crazy stuff that we put people through. God wants to be intimate with us. Amen? That's why they go here. Why can't we hear today in the church? Because we have put God in a box. And we say, God, this is how you operate in my life. Or this is how you operate in my church. Or whatever. And we can't get past that. And God is bigger than our box. Can you say amen? amen. God, break the boxes. Huh? Get a box cover. Just cut the box off and say, God, whatever you want to do with me, do Huh? Help me fulfill what you call me to do in Matthew. Right? Baptize the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit so we as disciples can make disciples. Right? We, our, our mission, what is your mission? Oh, I love when the kids go on mission trips and come back. Oh my goodness, they're so changed for about a week. <laughs> I love it. There's such amazingness. There's, there's something that happens. They could be a, a social churchgoer person, kid, you know, or even adults that go. They come back. Oh, they had. We gave all our clothes away. We gave everything we had away. We gave our suitcases away. We just came back with nothing, right? Because they had the people we meet. Just, they, they have nothing. They're so, they're so compassionate. And they go, wow, can we just bottle that and just keep that, right? Help the poor. Help them. Help the poor. Do what you can. Give. Matter of fact, Jason and Ramey has a, a family. I just remember this, so thank you, Holy Spirit. They have a family in, in Detroit that has, uh, uh, their house got on fire. They lost everything in the house fire. 
right? They all terminate. Five kids, five kids. The youngest has uh, some uh, chan some mental challenges, right? How did I say that word right? How would you say that? I don't know. Uh, physically, physically, yeah, challenged, and so he set the house on fire actually. So it, they lost everything. <clears throat> Is they're renting, so this is like an issue, and so now they they don't have anything, and so they need something. So Jason Ray, when uh, they have five boys, yeah, they have, uh, four boys and a toddler, actually the youngest of the boys, the one that never started the fire. Okay, so but they need clothes, they need shoes, they need hats, they need coats, they need bags, they need everything. So if you can help, see Jason Ray me after, and just you know do whatever you can do, all right, and uh, help them out, and we just. You know, sometimes these things happen. Uh, not, we, you have to tell me we can't help everybody, but we, we just do whatever we can, right? I can call every day. Can you help me? No, I can't. You know, you know, just help someone. We have a certain budget. That's all we can do for this church at this time. I can't wait till we get huge and have a thousand, millions of dollars in the bank. We just help everybody. You know, because I, I just think about this. Is what I think about when, let me just digress for just a moment on that. Okay, let me just talk to you real. So this lady is sitting there at some place, some government office, and they tell them, here's a phone book, call people at the churches, all right? And they call. And we're assembly God, so we get calls first, right? And I just can't, and I help when I can, you know? I mean, it's just, I, if we got $25 left in this, I, I tell the, 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 the app, we're not a bank, so we don't keep a lot of money here, so we're not here to store money for ourselves, right? We could use some more to do more things, but, you know, we do what we can. And so I help every once in a while. At least once a month, I try to help somebody that calls. I don't even know them. I don't expect anything from them. But I just think that lady would, you know, they, they tell us, and it's so funny because they tell the same story. I wonder if they have like a storyline in the telephone, where it from. Say these things, right? Because they just need help, right? And their whole world's falling apart. And, you know, they're calling the church. And I think we should do something, right? I know that's crazy, right? That's not normal. But what are, where else are you supposed to call, right? The government only has so much money, so it runs out every month too. So anyway, I, I'm a little bit, I just I pray, Holy Spirit, should I help this one? Should I help this one? I don't, you know, because I always need to say no. If you know me, you already know that. So anyway. Church has to change, right guys? Amen. We have to change. We have to change. The way we change is, is this. And, uh, I'm going to give you a little. Uh, I'm going to give you a little uh, some scripture here. Uh, hopefully, it'll touch your heart. There's two, uh, and don't have to turn there. But Ezekiel three three says, uh, "The word is like honey unto my lips," but it actually says milk and honey. So I think about we should know the we should know the. The word we should desire, Malcolm. No, would you turn to John one one? We're gonna end with this kind of. Um, the word of God is like honey. Amen. The children of Israel were told that when they went into the promised land, I got this connection this week. It's so I like I couldn't believe God shared this with me. The word of God is like honey to our lips, right? It says no, honey. The children of Israel were told that they, when they went into the promised land, that it was going to be, they were going into a land of milk and honey, right? So I think what the Holy Spirit shared with me is he says that we go into the promised land, it's going to be like milk and honey to us. Amen. Amen. And we're in the Word of God. The Word of God is going to touch us. It's going to be sweet. It's going to taste good. It's going to feed us. Amen. It's going to help us grow. Right? I can preach all I want. Andy can teach. Montana can teach. We can do all these teachings. But you know, when you're in the Word and you're seeking after God, it's like milk and honey. It tastes good. Oh, I was going to make some bread this morning. So the whole church smelled like bread because it's like bread too. Fresh bread, you know? It's like you can't, you, you want, you get, you ever bake bread? Oh man, the whole house smells like you got to have some bread. You got to get cut a slice. As soon as it's out of the oven, it's just enough, uh, warm enough to uh, cut. You cut it and you take a piece, put some butter on it, mm, 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 and eat. Oh, that's the word of God is like that, like fresh bread, right? It's like that. Milk and honey is, I mean, I love honey in my tea. 
Uh, I love honey. I'm just bread. I love honey, right? Just can't get enough of it. But the Word of God is supposed to be like that. Yep. Right? But we look, we have made it, the church has made it, we have made it over the years a drudgery to go to the Word of God and try to just get closer to God mm -hmm. and understand Him. But this is where we get closer. Quiet time. I want to challenge you to, to read your Word, obviously, as often as you can, but take a notebook with you. Take a note because that same the spirit that's not your spirit, the Holy Spirit, is going to tell you things about that word that you need for your life. Yeah. Amen? And don't do the whole, oh, I got a scripture verse, I'm going to bring it out a piece of bread and read every morning. I mean, it's kind of, I guess that's good. But it becomes religious, right? We have to do certain things. Don't get a chart either. A Bible reading chart. I used to, I didn't promote that here for years. I had one guy who never read his Bible. He's been a Christian for 50 years. Was here. Remember Lewis, right? Lewis read his Bible for the first time when he came here because we challenged him to read the Word, read the Word. So he was a he didn't like reading. So I said, Did you know on your computer you can go to Bible Gateway and it'll read it for you. It changed his world. He was reading the Word every day, you know. But then it became, guess what? I read my Bible. He would tell me like where he was at, you know. So I say to him, I say to him, Hey Lewis, what did God tell you while you're reading the Word? But I read 25 chapters today. I'm like, good. You know, I just try to, I try to be sarcastic. I'm a little bit that way sometimes. But what did, God, what did the Holy Spirit tell you? Well, I don't know. I said, tomorrow, read only two verses. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't read just two verses, but ask the Holy Spirit what it means. Yeah. Right? Right? Because the Holy Spirit is always talking to you, and it's always talking to you. you got to believe that's his responsibility. So he's always teaching us. He's always guiding us. He's always comforting us. Right? Right? That's the Holy Spirit's job. And, and bring a revelation of who God is in your life and in your situation. Amen? Like we were saying this morning, he's a good, good father. I shared this a couple weeks ago. I'm not a, I told the, the, my kids and my, you know, I'm not a good dad. I make mistakes, but God the Father is perfect. He never makes mistakes. It's, he keeps all his promises. Amen. He's a good, good father. So um, John wrote this about Jesus, and, and this is what I want to kind of sort of end with. And now I'm back to Matthew 28, now I'm here, okay? So I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm really I mean it. In the beginning of time, there was Jesus. And John writes this, in the beginning was the Word. 